break time. I stood in the middle of the dining area and surveyed the room. I immediately spotted the other three. Simon was standing in the kitchen, both hands in her waist. She appeared to be thinking about something. Yuni and Ibushi were sitting next to each other on the sofa. It looked like they were having fun talking, but I couldn't make out what the conversation was about. I decided to head over to Itsumi first, since she was the closest. Oh, she's wearing something different. Good morning for you, Kawasan. Did you sleep well after that last night? She turned to face me and she said that. I... Cool, answer good morning. Good morning. I managed to sleep soundly thanks to you. In fact, I only just got up. Ah, that way of speaking. Could it be Yukido? Itsumi noticed immediately I didn't need to tell her after all. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. It's because you were still Fury Karakukura the last we spoke. A frank answer. She really believed that I had DID. But I think my exchange phenomenon theory is much more likely. Well, nothing will come of it if I try to explain it to her, though. I don't think she'll believe me, but when it, even I have my own doubts about it, there's no harm in letting her believe I have DID. I tried to steer the conversation in another direction. By the way, it's Somi san. What are you doing here? It's almost noon, isn't it? So I'm preparing lunch. Preparing? But it looks like you haven't even gotten started yet. Uh, it certainly does look like that. Then I guess you could say I'm preparing to prepare. Quite honestly, I haven't decided what to make yet. Because of the time, I'm having trouble decide, deciding whether to go with breakfast menu or lunch one. I uh, see. I got it. Why don't I get you to decide, Yukido-kun? That would make solve everything. Breakfast or lunch style? I gave her my answer. Oh, breakfast. If possible, I'd, I'd rather it be breakfast style. I've got up quite a while ago, but I haven't had anything to eat yet. First meal of the day should be something simple, after all. Well then, let's see. You're all with toast, bacon and eggs with tuna and salad. Yep. How about how about soup? Would you like some? You probably wouldn't be able to eat that much, right? What kind of soup is it? Pumpkin soup. It's my it's my specialty. <laughs> Pumpkin soup. As soon as she said that, a chill ran through my body. It made my hair stand on end, as, and I felt as though I was breaking out of in hives. Oh, wait a second, Sami Sam. I beg of you, anything but that. Please spare me. <laughs> Why? I really hate pumpkins. They're all runny and slimy, isn't it disgusting? Even the way they all... They look all rough like a rock, it's hideous. Uh, it's rare for someone to dislike pumpkins that much. If you ask, if you ask me, it's the people who like them that are weird. <laughs> she covered her mouth while her hand as she laughed. Well then, let's hold... Let's hold off on the pumpkin soup. Yes, please, yes. I answered her, and then... Oh, that's, oh, that's right, I made some coffee, would you like some? She swung into a completely different subject. I... have some. Okay, I'll have a cup. I accepted her suggestion and took a seat. She removed the pot from the coffee maker. As I started absently in her direction, I... Do you like coffee? Or do you like coffee? It threw me some. I pitched another topic straight down the line from her. She answered. Yes, I drink it every morning without fail. Moderate amounts of caffeine are good for your body, you know. Recovery from fatigue and awakening effect. Diuretic properties. It quickly uh, met metabolizes. The body waste products, so they say it's good for the skin too. Oh, really? How about milk? Uh, put some in. How about milk? Put some in. Uh, yes, please. And my reply, she poured some fresh cream into the milk. Okay, here we go. The cup made a pleasing little thump as she sat it. As she set it on the table beside me. White steam rose from the creamy brown liquid within. I brought the rim of the cup to my lips. Oh, it tastes great. With a happy smile spreading across her lips, she... What time did you wake up, Yukido? Asking that, she sat down opposite me. Around 6.30, I guess. I returned to the cup to the, t um, to the table and answered. 6.30? That's quite early, isn't it? It's because it slept so well. That's probably, wh that's probably why I woke up so early. I see, so that's it. The medicine was effective then, wasn't it? Medicine? I'd asked her before I knew it. The empty medicine package I found in my room earlier. It immediately popped into my head. You mean the Zegtaman medicine? Yes, that's right. Then you were the one who gave it to me, Itsumi some. Nora paused my colored her eyes and she looked away. And then, as if suddenly remembering something, she thumped her fist into her palm. I see, that's right, isn't it? You don't remember that at all, do you, Yukido Kon? That? You would not give the sleeping pills to you, no, I mean to Fu Karasan. Sleeping pills? I shouted in surprise. What's wrong? Is everything alright? No, forget it. It's not. Th it's nothing serious. Despite my commentary inside, my head was spinning. I had remembered something. My condition last night. Hazy senses, dizziness, the loss of feeling in my arms and legs. 
Afterward, I'd collapsed into the bed and was then attacked by intense drowsiness. I see Zegtomen was a sleeping pill. Pill. I hadn't noticed until she mentioned it, but now that I think about it, it makes sense. Kirkura got the medicine from Sami and had taken it before the transfer. But why? Hey, it's Sumi saw. Why did you give it to Kokoro or someone like sleeping pills? Uh, well, I question. There's only one reason to give someone sleeping pills, isn't there? There is. To allow them to sleep soundly. Why else? Then was it Kokoro who asked for them? She came to you complaining of insomnia? No, I was the one who offered them to her. After all, a lot happened yesterday. That's why I thought she tired. And I thought she could do with a good night's sleep. Well, it's one of the medications often prescribed for those displaying your symptoms, too. As a psychiatrist, I had to consider what medication would be most appropriate for you at the time. And that was Zekitman. And where was Inibushi Kaiko at the time? My thoughts never stopped coming. Even as I pressed her for answers, I lobbed another question at her. She was in her room. However, at the time, she appeared to be Hitori rather than Kaiko. So where did you give Kokoro the medicine? In Hitori- In Hitori-chan's room. From her, what she said bothered me. Even at Sumi, had begun to call Inibushi Hitori instead. But that didn't matter, at least right now. I continued my line of questioning. And does that mean she's- Does that mean she saw you? Hand over the sleeping pills? I wonder. She was unconscious, so I don't think she saw. She was unconscious. According to Itami's story, Sakura Hitori and Ibushi Kaiko had a second fit right before that. She suddenly started to scream and then went on a rampage. The one who restrained her was Kokoro in my body, who just happened to be at the scene. I see, so that all happened. I took another sip of my copy, coffee. Let me ask you just in case. Yuni was there, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He came, he came running after he heard Hitori chan scream. In other words, all four people in the same room. Guess that's how it is, right? yes? Hey, why are you asking about this? Uh, just... Tsumi tilted his, her head. From the look of things, her inquiry was purely innocent. Thank you, you were really informative. There was nothing to be gained from pursuing her f her f this further. I finished the remaining coffee in one gulp and stood up to leave. Oh, uh, that's right. About the pumpkin soup. I know, I know. I'll leave the pumpkin off the menu just this once. She had a refreshing smile. She didn't seem to be worrying very much about my questions. Okay. I'm gonna go back and do the other options. So, I'm not Furukawa. Sorry, son, I'm sorry, but I'm not Furukawa Kokoro right now. What? Then you are Yukido Kahun? Yes. I'm sorry. It's because he was. Yeah, okay, that's good. Lunch style? Possible. If possible, I'd rather be it be a lunch style. I haven't eaten anything since I woke up, so if I had to choose, I'd like to eat something filling. Something filling? For example, toast, bacon, eggs, and with tuna salad? Uh, doesn't this sound like a typical breakfast menu? Really? But you're fine with anything as long as there's a lot of it, right, Yukido kun? I looked deep into Yutsami's eyes. She sheepishly looked away. What's up with that? You had the menu decided from the start. Hehe, <laughs> you found me out. I had, but I wasn't very attached to the decision. I was worried that everyone would complain about it. That's why I thought I'd have you decide. If you'd answered breakfast style, it would have been out of my hands, right? She said with a grin. She seemed really happy. I found myself thinking more about our behavior in the conversation. Is there something you wanted to say? No, not really. I, I understand. In that case, I'll make some soup just for you, Yukida kun. Pumpkin soup is my specialty, you see. The pumpkin soup? No! Don't have any. No, I'll pass. Why? Moderate amounts of ca moderate amounts of caffeine are good for your body, you know. Recovery from fatigue and awakening effect to uretic properties it quickly me um, metabolizes the body's waste products, so they say it's good for the skin, too. Oh, uh, really? But I'm a guy, so I'm a guy, so I'm not particularly concerned with beauty. I see. Then I guess I'll just have some for myself. Saying that, she poured herself some coffee. With a mug in her hand, took a seat in the dining hall. Dining area. I sat down opposite her. What time did you wake up, Yukido-kun? She asked after placing her cup to her lips. Around 6.30, I guess. I answered as I absentmindedly watched. 6.30, that's quite early, isn't it? That's because I slept so well. That's probably why I woke up so early. I see, so that's it. As I drummed on my temple with a finger, I cut the conversation short and took my leave. Uh, yep, good. So that's 100% now. The bird within the cage. Um, okay. Kikume, Kikume, the bird within the cage. When or when will you come out in the evening? Lit by the dawn. Crane and the turtle slipped and fell. Who's that behind you? 
On my way to the terrace, the song reached my ears. Uh, let's see. Oh, they're doing it oppositely, oppositely now. Oh, I get it, because we're more Kokoro, they probably took turns. He's wearing something different this time. That's... It's weird. Is that meant to be some kind of hospital gown? Because it has a tag. Tori chan Tori chan Forgot T voice, right? Ugh. Yuni answered cheerfully. Her white hands covered both of her eyes. You got me. Wait. Wait, what? What? <laughs> What? She talks? What? I'm so confused right now. Okay, so obviously this could be two things. One, it could be that Hidori... Uh, it could be three things. Um, one, it could be Hitori actually does talk, but she hides it from Kokoro. Two, and these are like opposites. Two and three are like opposites. Two, Hitori can actually talk, but when Kokoro is around, Hitori is Kaiko, who can't talk. Or three, it's the opposite. Kaiko is pretending to be Hitori by not talking, and the real Hitori can actually talk. Oh, I do not know what's going on. The answer was Hitori. She lowered his hands, exclaiming that in delightful voice. Yuni turned around and let out a cheer. Ooh, ooh, I did it. Hey, let's play again, again. Yeah, okay. It was just the two of them here. Or maybe she only talks comfortably in front of, um, Uni. The side of them at play, which would normally be a pleasant side, did not appear that to me. With just the two of them playing Kagome Kagome, it felt, how should I put it, eerie. Oh well, that side had other things in mind. Watching them from the corner of my mind, I made my way over to the terrace. I slid open the glass door and stepped outside. The weather showed no sign of improvement. The howling mind embraced my body as the chills pierced me to the bone. Cold. I drove back into the living area, went back to my room to grab a coat, and after putting it on, returned to challenge the storm once more. Ah, oh, it's this coat. I think it's the same coat that we saw him at the end of, uh, Kirkoro's thing. No good. A single coat hardly changes anything. But there's nothing else to it. I don't have anything else to add an ex as an extra layer. Gave up and plunged into the snowstorm. Shoved my hands deep into the coat pocket, stuck to my head, and kept moving. Though it was just before noon, the sky was dark. It was an unsettling color as though ink had been spilled across it. A binding cold wind, a myriad of snowflakes flying about before my eyes. I stopped shivering. I stopped shivering and managed to awkwardly turn my head. While yawned the white out landscape, I could make out the silhouette of the building. In the middle of it all was the clock tower, soaring over the scenery below. I lifted my gaze upwards. I fell from there, huh? I muttered through my trembling lips. Why did I even come out there? I just wanted to check out the clock tower, wasn't that it? Having listened to Itsumi's story just before, my mind returned once again to the matter of my near drowning in the bathtub last night. Kokoro and my body had apparently taken some pills. Sleeping pills. If, for example, someone was out to kill me, that person knew that, for him or maybe her, would be the perfect opportunity. Living things normally passes a condition of flight reflex when in danger, but there was something I'd lacked at the time. Due to the effects of the medicine, I was stripped of my instinctive reflexes. If I wanted to kill somebody like that, how would I go about doing it? Making it seem like an accident would surely be the best. If I were a killer, that is definitely what I'd do. I'd carry the senseless body into the bathroom and plunge it into the bathtub filled with water. From there, all I'd have to do was stand and wait. If it seemed as though the body was about to float to the surface, I'd simply have to push the head back into the water and that would be it. No need to even dirty my hands. Uh, metaphorically. Of course, it would increase my chances of success if I bound the victim's wrists. But that would leave marks that would make it obvious that it was a murder. So, without the need for any fuss... No, wait. Why not take my clothes off, then? If you wanted to make a look like an accident, wouldn't it be a good idea to strip the victim first? Perhaps was it all done simply for pleasure? Just for the sake of seeking me drown? Couldn't be. Now there was a line of thought I really didn't want to delve into. Or rather, I felt there was something wrong from something wrong with me for even having such a thought in the first place. Um, I have no real grounds to suspect anyone anymore. Anyway, so I'm just being paranoid now. It was probably just an accident. Kokoro having taken the sleeping pills and thus unsteady in her feet, tried perhaps to take a bath. There, she slipped and fell. With her clothes on, ran into the bathtub head first. Hmm... 
Somehow the explanation didn't seem very believable, and I suddenly thought of something. My fall from the clock tower. If it had really been an accident, then that would mean I'd come with my hair's breadth of death twice in just eight hours, merely by chance. First, I fell from a height of 15 meters, then I nearly drowned in a bathtub while under the influence of sleeping pills. Can you really chalk all that up to chance? That's why I... came out here to look at the clock tower. I thought I might remember something if I could see it, but I recalled nothing. Far from remembering anything, I felt as if I was forgetting more and more. Because of the harsh cold, I couldn't get my head to work right. Ugh, it's so cold. And yet I couldn't give up. Since I went out to all the trouble of making my way out here, I decided that I might as well explore the surrounding area. At the top of the hill to the west, around the front gate to the north, the basketball court to the east, I visited several places before returning to my original spot. I looked at the clock tower from every possible angle. One thing kept bothering me. That clock tower, how do you get up there? There was no stairs outside. Would it be safe to say that they had to be inside? Yet I hadn't found a single entrance leading into the tower from the inside. The clock tower rose from the roof. There's nothing below it, just the excessively spacious living area. Did I really go up there? Um... I didn't climb. And maybe I didn't climb it after all. Mitsunumi said I fell from the sky to get the lightning bolt, but she never said anything about falling from the clock tower. I just arbitrarily imagined that. Yet- oh wait! I thought he meant climb as in he tried climbing up the wall from the outside, not literally climbed up. So, yeah. Yet if I- I'm, I'm choosing all the choices anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yet if I had to fall from somewhere, that somewhere would surely have been the clock tower. Right at that moment, the chimes from the clock tower resounded solemnly. The hands pointed upwards. I took my wristwatch out of my pocket right away. The display- the digital display showed the time, 12. The clock tower told the time with not a minute of deviation. Metallic sound that was like the coarse voice of an aged man alerted me at the hour of the hand. The snow danced violently to the sound of the bells as the raging wind stirred it, though what I saw were twinkling and sparkling particles of light, and if in a number of angels dancing and rejoicing at the advent of a great gospel. Ugh! At that instant, a vivid scene revived in my mind. On top of the clock tower, a shadow in the light. The shadow came from, from behind me and stretched out towards my feet. Who's there? I turned around, saying this as forcefully as I could. There was no. F there was a faint. There was the faint shadow of a person in front of the door. However, the fierce wind and the dancing snow prevented me from seeing who it was. Even the silhouette was impossible to make through the thick white curtain of snow. Who is it? I called out once again. The shadow gave no answer. It was slowly moving closer. Feelings of fear and distress began to grow inside me. I was backed up into a corner of the roof by the mysterious shadow as it slowly drew nearer and nearer. Shadow didn't stop. Lightning bolts glittered in the distance like flames. The well-honed blade struck the earth. The silhouette could be ma made out in the black light. An instant, I finally figured out what the shadow really was. I saw it. Definitely saw its true form. Right, so I was up on the clock tower. The sound of the bell awoke the memory in me. Nevertheless, I couldn't recall the true form of the shadow that the lightning had illuminated. As though it had been filtered out, that one essential bit of information alone was gone from my head. I don't even know if it was a man or a woman or a child. It felt as if someone had intentionally severed the link of that memory. Damn, I should definitely be able to remember it, but... In my irritation and confusion, I violently kicked the snow on my feet. Meanwhile, the cold, the cold wind con continued to mercilessly chip away at my core temperature. If I stood here pondering any longer, I'd be risking my life for the third time today. The cold wind was depriving me of common sense. No longer able to stand there, I decided to flee back into the building for now. Okay. I'm gonna go back and choose the other option. I climbed it. I climbed it. That's right, I definitely climbed it. I muttered as though to convince myself of it. And then, after climbing it, what happened then? I'll stay within the labyrinth of my memories and no accident sight. Follow the path of utmost care. Right at that moment, the chimes from the clock tower resounded. The hands pointed upwards. I took my wristwatch, okay? And yet, I can't remember. It sort of been filtered out, the one central bit of information alone was gone from my head. And there we go. The warm water of the shower, which normally felt so nice, seemed to be burning through my skin. Uh, I threw up my clothes and left them to the bathroom. It takes time for a cold body to come to grips with such shock, but gradually, by the pain and irritation began to fade, carried down, 
away by the pleasant warmth. Soothed by the jets of water as they flowed over me, I began to think. Someone had pushed me off the top of the clock tower, so it seemed. I had witnessed it all myself, sure. However, I couldn't seem to think of who it was, no matter how hard I tried. The reason why I had gone up to the clock tower was still a mystery, too. There were plenty of things I didn't know. Moreover, most of the memories I could recall were limited to those made in sphere. I was still clueless when it comes to the shelter cabin and the transference phenomenon. It seems my tendency to focus on only one thing at a time was causing me to forget about others, but I don't suppose there's anything I could do about it. I had no other choice than to continue investigating, attempting to piece together the chaos of my thoughts in the meantime. However, I couldn't even be 100% sure of anything I thought I knew. These mysteries must be all connected somehow. All of those extremely unnatural phenomenon phenomena occurring one after the other. It's, attempting, it's tempting to believe that they're all single point of origin. Well, anyway, this simply this might imply that the probability of, of there being someone out to kill me was increasing. I still couldn't state that with confidence, but I wouldn't be all surprised if that turned out to be the case. The clock tower and the bathtub, it was difficult to imagine that both of them were mere accidents. If there were accidents, then just who was that shadow I saw in the flash of light? What significance the closing door I heard last night? Someone must be after me. I could end up dead a minute from now, for all I know. I turned off the water and stepped out of the bathroom. Are you finally going to write that note? Having wiped myself off from the towel, I threw on my clothes. My mind had calmed down a little. After all, myself excluded, there were only two women and one child here in Sphere at the moment. If one of them was the culprit, there's no real reason to be frightened. Objectively, so... Wow! <laughs> Oh yeah, women are weak. Uh, child are weak as well. Oh yeah, I'm I'm sexist. I'm sexist, Sotero. <laughs> Objectively speaking, the difference in physical strength between us was obvious. <laughs> My opponent could hardly be thinking of tackling me head on. If they wanted to strike me, it would have to be at a time when my guard was down. For example, when I was asleep or after I'd taken some string, some strong medicine. Now wait a second. Those wouldn't be the only options. I'd accepted it as a fact that there were only four, four people in Sphere. But there was also a chance that a fifth person was hiding somewhere. I had the layout of Sphere memorized. I don't think there were any places here where people could hide themselves. However, my memory is far from perfect. I couldn't shake the feeling that I might have forgotten something. Fifth person, huh? I decided to have a look around Sphere later on. But before that, there was something I had to do. I had to leave a message for a few Karakokoro. Finally! I didn't know where the transfer would occur. I had to tell her everything important. While well, I still could. I took up the felt tip pen I noticed before and walked over to the desk. I'm not really sure if I should say nice to meet you or thanks for visiting again. I don't. I. I doubt I'd ever know anyone that I've had this much trouble coming with a greeting for. You could have Satoru. Now we've already read this, but I'm probably going to just read it again. I think you've already noticed it as well, but it looks like we're currently experiencing some kind of personality exchange. I don't know the exact reason for this. What I do know is that you're a woman named Fukara Kokoro. First thing I want to clear up is about your body. About your body. I never say this, so be careful not to touch or look at anything unless it's absolutely necessary. I don't know what your impression is of me when you saw my face, but I'm a gentleman, so please don't worry about that. Forgive me for jumping right into business, but I have a few things I must discuss with you. First thing I want to do is make sure what's happening is really a personality exchange. From what I can tell, it seems that during my time my consciousness leaves the body, your consciousness takes my place within it. Likewise, whenever your consciousness leaves your body, my consciousness takes possession of it. As if there are two drivers alternating between two different cars. But I don't have any conclusive evidence that this is what's happening. Right now, all I have to go on are the words of the people around me. I heard that at Sphere, my body addressed itself as Fukara Kokoro while I wasn't around. And then at the shelter cabin, Yumogi-san told me that the owner of the body was someone named Fukara Kokoro. So if we were to believe what they said, then we have no choice but to accept that your consciousness and mine are coming and going between each other's bodies. But, even though I know Fukara's face and voice, I haven't had a chance to communicate with her actual personality. Freeze cars is the analogy, then I am familiar with Fukara Kokoro, the car, but I have yet to meet you, the driver with him. I won't beat around the bush. The point is, I have my doubts that this personality called Kokoro really exists, so I was hoping you would leave some kind of evidence behind that proves you do actually exist. Since we can't talk to each other directly, can you at least write down some kind of reply on the paper this note is written on? Anything will do. Just leave some evidence behind that Fukuro Kokoro personality controlling my body exists. Also, if you can, I'd like to recall you to recall this time. The, the time. The time I'm interested in is the time you took over my body. From this, we can determine whether the transfer of consciousness happens at a fixed schedule or if it occurs randomly. If we can figure out some kind of pattern to it, then wouldn't it be more convenient for both of us? We'd be able to realize when there's one more minute left until the transfer and finish up whatever we need to do by then. But if it happens random, we'll... well, we'll figure something out if 
if and when that turns out to be the case. Even realizing the transfer happens at random is a step forward. Right, right, that reminds me, I forgot to write down something very important. The truth is, I... No, maybe my body would be more accurate. The truth is, my body is ample. Boom, boom. <laughs> I remember that. 